So basically what I want to do is how to make a protein. But I promise you, this is going to be a fun thing. Um, you probably learned parts of this going back to stuff that you've had before, but we'll go into more detail. I'm not going to do detail today. Basically, how to make a protein. Um, to close your books, or close your, you don't have to write anything down, it'll all be recorded. And I'll make this a little bit easier for you guys. Okay. Yeah, all right. It took me a long time to figure out what's the best way to teach this. It came to me about like four years ago. And uh, after I did this, the students just saw protein synthesis completely different and they got it. They clicked all the different parts of it. So, what I want to do is just show you um, by making a brownie. They will like brownies. With or without nuts, whatever. Okay, but making a brownie is the same thing as making a protein, and there's different steps in there. Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you making a brownie and the steps, and I'm gonna refer to these steps when we get into transcription and translation tomorrow. Okay, uh, but I'll, if you already know a little bit about transcription and translation, I'll show you where they very briefly where they fit in today. I'll show you where they go. So this is what we want to do. We want to make the best brownie that you can make. All right, a protein. The brownie is the protein. So you go to your library, the nucleus, and you see there is 46 volumes of the recipe book. They're the best ones. All right, 46 chromosomes. So we have different recipes and different genes to make protein. So this particular protein we want to make is something called a brownie. Now, we are not going to make a copy of the whole encyclopedia set. Not going to happen. You don't need to. You just want a copy of that one recipe. Okay? So what do you do? You find, you realize that the recipe for, that calls for this brownie that you want to make is in, I don't know, volume 12, page 230. And when you get there, you notice that it covers on three different pages. What you're going to do is you're going to take that chromosome out, or that book out, you're going to open it, okay? So we're going to unzip the DNA at that particular point. We're going to open it up. Now, we cannot take that outside the library. That DNA is a reference book that has to stay in the library. You can't take it out. So you need to make a copy of that recipe, right? Which is on three pages. So you're going to take that recipe book, open it up, put it on the Xerox machine, Make copies of those three pages, take the book, close it back up, and put it back on the shelf. So we really didn't disturb the DNA. We wanted a copy of that recipe. To make that copy, that's what transcription is. That's Xerox copy. And that Xerox copy, at the end of transcription, when you take those pages, that's mRNA. That is the recipe that you can use to make your, your brown. You following so far? Okay? Now, we close it up. Now, the problem is we've got to do something with those pages, though. Because even though it's on three different pages, you're still going to get a recipe from the preceding one that you got the brownie. So we have to cut that off and remove it. Those are called insults. Okay? Anyway, there's a picture of Julia Childs, and we really don't care about the picture of these. So we cut that out, too. We just want the essence of making a brownie, just the recipe. So we've got to do some splicing. Those splicings are removing introns, or we're, re we're keeping in something called the exon. We'll get into that later. Okay? Now we've got exactly what we want. It's on two pages now, we'll splice it. Now we've got to take it to our kitchen. So we're in the library right now. We've got to take it to our kitchen at our home. So this mRNA, this now new mRNA, the one that you splice this up, can leave the library, can leave the nucleus. And you're going to go on this trip, right, on the street. So you're going to be taking endoplasmic reticulum, right? And it's going, some of it will have what we call ribosomes on it. So we're going to go to the house, to our house, and the ribosome is going to be our kitchen. 
Right? That's the place that we're going to convert the recipe into the actual brownie that we're going to make. Okay? This is where translation takes place in the kitchen. All right, you with me so far? Okay? You're in the kitchen. Now, the recipe, here's our bowl. All right, that's the ribosome. We got to put the ingredients in it, and we got to follow the recipe. The recipe says you got to put water first, then eggs, then brownie mix. You have to go at a certain order, otherwise, it's not going to taste right. So this recipe, this mRNA, is now going to code to make this brownie. But you have to do it in this order. If you put the eggs before the water, it's going to make something else. You've got to follow it in the order that it wants to. So, where are we going to get the water? Where are we going to get the eggs? Where are we going to get the brownie? That's where my family gets involved. Right, because I don't have these ingredients in the house. So my mother is going to bring the water. She's what we call a tRNA. And she's carrying an ingredient, an amino acid. In this particular case, it's water. What you'll learn is methionine. Okay? She's bringing the water, because it calls for water first. She's going to drive up to the driveway. She's going to come into the house. She's going to pour the water into the bowl, leave the bottle there, and she gets back in her car, and she leaves without the amino acid. Okay? She leaves the kitchen without the amino acid, because now the amino acid is now in the bowl that we're going to go in to make this long chain. So she goes off. She's a tRNA without the amino acid. She'll get an amino acid later on some other way. Okay? The next thing it calls for is eggs. And dad is the one that has the eggs. How do I know dad's got the eggs and mom's got the water? Well, there's something called a genetic code. Basically, it's the telephone call that you know says eggs call this number, uh, water call this number. So each person can only carry a certain amino acid. Each tRNA can only carry a certain amino acid. My mother is the one that carries water. My father is the one that carries eggs. Now, he's going to come up, go to the driveway. He's going to come into the house, crack open the eggs, put them in the bowl. Notice that this thing is getting longer. It's getting full, this bowl. And then he leaves without eggs as a tRNA, and he leaves the house. He'll get his eggs some place down the road. The next thing it calls for is brownie mix. My sister's got the brownie mix. That's what the phone call is. That's who I call. So I call my sister. Yeah, no problem. I'll be right over. She drives up. She's a tRNA, has an amino acid on her. In this case, brownie mix. She goes into the kitchen, opens the box, pours the brownie mix in there. She gets back in her car without brownie mix, without the amino acid, and leaves as a tRNA without amino acid. My brother and Ann and stuff will keep on bringing more stuff in. Meanwhile, this bowl is getting bigger and bigger, long chain, okay? And mix it all together, okay? How do I know where I'm done with it? Well, down at the bottom, it says finished. Last step, enjoy. Enjoy is my little code to say, hey, look, this is my stop. This is where I'll go. And there's little things that say this is the stop code on. We'll get into that. Now, the ribosome is done. It made the protein. However, you can't just eat it like that. Well, I could all look at bowls and stuff, but you've got to bake it, right? So you've got to put it in the oven and bake it. Now it's all baked and it's done. It's not packaged, though. You see, you've got the brownies in the pan and stuff, but you're going to have to now cut it up. Right? Some of them I'm going to eat right away. See, this cutting up, this packaging, some of them will put in saran wrap. This packaging is what the Golgi apparatus does. It makes it so it's usable. Sure, you can go in and just eat everything in there, but you don't want to do that these days, right? But you cut it up, and some of them you'll eat right away. Some of them, the proteins will be used right away. 
Some of them you're actually going to put saran wrap around them and put in a refrigerator for a later use that's a vegetable, right? And sometimes you'll actually take the brownie and put it in Tupperware and you want to leave your house, leave your cell, and give it to other neighbors. So it leaves the exocytosis. And that's basically what protein synthesis is all about, is really making a brownie. 